This is Hobie, and Hobie is my new bearded dragon. And bearded dragons are by far the most popular pet lizards in the world. But I actually think that they are not for everyone. So the question is, how do you actually care for a bearded dragon? Paano ba dapat maalagaan sila dito sa Pilipinas? Today, we'll be covering everything that you need to know for owning a bearded dragon here in the Philippines. What's poppin' Fauna Fam, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Roque, and I'm a fourth year vet student in the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and part-time content creator. In this video, I'll be going over the absolute basic essentials for bearded dragon care, while also unpacking some scientific concepts that you'll need to know for keeping a beardy here in the Philippines. Look, I am by no means a professional, but I have done my fair share of research on proper bearded dragon care so that you don't need to. So if you want to learn more about animals and vet school, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you never miss a video. But before getting into the nitty gritty of bearded dragon care, a quick story time and life update. You might have met my leopard gecko Zuko from my Instagram posts or my Philippine monitor lizards, which you can find right here. Best friend ko talaga si Zuko and my number one study buddy. But unfortunately, a couple of months back, I actually lost Zuko due to a rapid and deadly condition called follicular stasis. It turns out that he was actually a she and essentially, hindi siya makakabuo ang egg sa katawan niya due to hormonal imbalances primarily caused by her genetics. It was a rapidly progressing condition and I was absolutely devastated when she passed. That was until I got this random notification on Facebook less than a month later. You see, I joined this free raffle of White Dragon Farms, isa sa pinakasikat at reputable breeders ng bearded dragons dito sa Pilipinas. And suddenly, this happened. Roque Banzon! Magalo pa guys, magalo pa. Oh, there you go. Rocky Banson. And to cut the long story short, I was blessed by this little guy. This is Hobie Brown, named after the legendary spider punk from across the spider verse, and he's my new three month old bearded dragon. I won't be diving into the morph so much in this video, but essentially, he's a half dark red bearded dragon who is head for trance and head for hypo. Now, in order to explain the care for these little dragons, we first need to explain what exactly these little dinos are. Bearded dragons, also known as Pagona viticeps, are agamid lizards from the land down under. They're arid animals, meaning that they come from the dry outback deserts of Australia, where they spend majority of their day basking and hunting for little critters to eat. Beardies are one of the most popular exotic pets out there because they top out at a good size of about 18 inches live for about 8 to 10 years in captivity, and have arguably the most friendly personalities amongst all lizards. As in, tatambay lang talaga sila sa balikat mo at hindi sila gagalaw. And I've already spent hours studying with Hobie right here on my shoulder. But because they come from a very different environment from our tropical climate, they have very specific needs, which I'll be going over today. And make sure to stick to the end because it's by far the most important. Let's start with the enclosure. So, in order to keep a bearded dragon, you'll need to give them a house to stay in. As I mentioned earlier, these guys aren't exactly small reptiles as an adult reaches just under 2 feet. Kaya, ang recommended enclosure size para sa kanila ay 4 feet long, 2 feet deep, and 2 feet tall. Sa totoo lang, medyo malaki ito kumpara sa mga ibang exotics. But this is because they require a thermal gradient. Essentially, my side na mas mainit at my side na mas cool. Remember that these guys are desert animals. Kaya kahit mainit na sa pinas, kailangan pa rin nila ng external heat source, which I'll get to later. And while some people might say that a 60 gallon enclosure is enough, that's way too small for an adult bearded dragon. And I strongly suggest that you offer them something bigger. Imagine yun na lang. Buong buhay mo nasa loob ng isang cubicle sa banyo. Sure, makakabuhay ka pa rin. Pero sa tingin nyo, magiging masaya ka dyan? Now, if you're getting a baby bearded dragon, then you can start with a smaller one. But I recommend getting a 120 gallon one to start it off to save you the hassle and expenses. Now, I personally got mine from Reptile Sky and it was a hand-me-down from Zuko, RIP. But 
You can find enclosures on Facebook Marketplace, Cartemar, and even Shopee. Now, once you have the enclosure down, the next thing to fix is the substrate. Basically, ang substrate ay yung flooring na ilalagay nyo sa baba ng enclosure. Bearded dragons are eating and pooping machines. So ideally, you want something that's easy to clean. The easiest option would be paper towels or newspaper as you can just throw it away once you're done. Pero kung itong pinili nyo, make sure to provide a rough surface inside their enclosure so that they can file down their nails as they do get quite sharp. Basta, avoid nyo lang ang reptile carpet because aside from it being a breeding ground for bacteria, their nails can also get stuck in the carpet and can actually get plucked out as they move around. Another option for substrate would be a loose substrate like a soil and sand mixture. But if you have a baby bearded dragon or even a juvenile, then I actually wouldn't recommend it as they are more prone to impaction. Essentially, nagkakaroon ang impaction kapag kumain sila ng substrate at nababara o na-obstruct ang bituka nila dahil hindi nila may digest. So, if you have a baby or juvenile, then I recommend sticking to the other options I mentioned earlier. The next thing you want to provide in their enclosure is a basking or elevated spot. Bearded dragons are semi-arboreal lizards, meaning that they like being high up. Di yung sabog ha, masama po yun. In the wild, you'll naturally find them basking on branches and shrubs. So, make sure that you have a high point in their enclosure near the heat source to replicate their natural habitat. Another thing you want to provide in their enclosure is some sort of hiding spot. Isipan nyo na lang kung ang kwarto mo nasa loob ng SM at kailangan mong matulog, jumebs, lahat sa harap ng mga tao. Medyo awkward, di ba? So, just like humans, we need to provide them a private space where they can feel secure and safe. And last for the enclosure, you want to make sure that there's enough ventilation. Although sinabi ko na kailangan mainit talaga sa enclosure nila, they still need adequate ventilation to prevent overheating. You can tell when your enclosure is getting too hot pag nakabuka ka ang bibig ng beardy mo kahit nasa cool side na sila. You see, beardies can't sweat like us humans do. And when you see this, they're essentially expelling excess moisture in their mouth to cool their body temperature down. Kaya kahit trip nila ang hot environment, kailangan din ng ventilation sa enclosure. Just like how you should vent down in the comment section down below to let me know what kind of videos you- Oh! He literally just jumped. Just how you should vent down in the comment section down below to let me know what kind of videos you want me to create. Now, speaking of the heat, let's cover the temperature. As I mentioned earlier, bearded dragons like it really hot as they come from the dry deserts of Australia where temperatures reach 30 to 50 degrees Celsius during the day. Like all cold-blooded reptiles, bearded dragons are ectotherms, meaning that they are reliant on their external environment like the sun. This is why they are considered basking creatures, because they soak up all that good heat from the sun. They need high temperatures to digest their food and regulate their metabolic system, and without it, they will surely die. Bearded dragons require a basking spot that reaches about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius and an ambient temperature of about 25 to 30 degrees. And the best way to achieve this is by including a basking light in their enclosure. I personally use a Reptizoo 50 watt halogen light and this allows me to achieve a basking spot of about 36 degrees Celsius while keeping the humidity down. Which leads me to my next point, humidity. The dry outbacks of Australia have an average relative humidity of about 40 to 60 percent, which is way lower than our tropical climate of the Philippines, where we average about 80 percent relative humidity. You see, having high humidity is kind of a double-edged sword. The pro is that they have a much easier time shedding. As you can see, his head is currently mid-shed, and of course, he decides to shed when I'm about to record this video. But the con is that they are more prone to respiratory infections. And for all you nerds like me, it's typically caused by Eremonas and Pseudomonas species. Kaya isang paraan para makibaba ang humidity ay gamitin ng halogen light to reduce the humidity at iwasan nyo rin malagyan ng tubig sa loob ng enclosure. Next up, we have UV lighting. UV lights or ultraviolet lights are absolutely essential for keeping a healthy bearded dragon because without it, they can't process 
calcium, and vitamin D. More on that later. If they don't have a UV source, it'll eventually lead to a fatal and catastrophic disease called metabolic bone disease, or MBD. Essentially, ang calcium at vitamin D ay natutulong sa digestion at sa pagbubuo ng buto ng bearded dragon. At kung wala silang UV source, almost guaranteed magkakaroon ng MBD sa alaga nyo. MBD is a painful and untreatable condition, so prevent this by providing them a UV source inside their enclosure. The best source of UV is the sun itself, but since majority of us keep them indoors, use a UV bulb instead. I personally use a Linear Reptisun T5 high output bulb because it's the best in the market and provides UV throughout the entire enclosure. Pwede rin gamitin ang coiled UV bulbs, but based on the latest research, they're actually considered to be outdated. Each linear UV bulb costs about 1,500 pesos, which is honestly quite costly and one of the other reasons why I believe that bearded dragons are not the best pets for everyone. But you want to know what's not expensive? Hitting that like and subscribe button as it literally doesn't cost you any more than a couple of ATP. And the last category in this video is the diet. Like I said earlier, bearded dragons are eating machines and watching them eat is probably one of the best parts about owning one. These animals are omnivores, meaning that they eat both fresh produce and protein. Their basic diet consists of three things. One, insects. Two, fresh produce. And three, supplements. At nagiba ang ratio ng diet depende sa edad nila. Dragons within the age of 1 to 4 months are considered babies, 4 to 12 months are considered juveniles, and 1 year and above are considered adults. Baby bearded dragons require a diet of 70% insects and 30% fresh produce, while juvenile bearded dragons require a 50-50 split between fresh produce and insects, and adult bearded dragons require 70% fresh produce and 30 Oh! Adult bearded dragons require 70% fresh produce and 30% still belonging to the insects. Now that we have the ratios figured out, it's now time to cover what you can actually feed your bearded dragon. Let's start with the insects. Insects will be a staple for your beardy throughout their entire lives. They are the primary source of protein that they need for proper muscle development. So before getting a bearded dragon, make sure that you can handle insects as they will be a staple throughout their entire lives. According to research, the best feeder insect that you can provide are dubia roaches as they provide all the essential proteins for their diet. Madali lang mahanap ang dubia roaches since they are one of the most popular exotic pet feeders out there. At pwede nyo rin gumawa ng colony sa bahay nyo para hindi ka nagagastos. Some of the other options are superworms and mealworms but because of their high fat and phosphorus content, they actually aren't ideal staples. Now let's go over the fresh produce. Bearded dragons need vegetables to survive, and it's important to know what should be given daily, occasionally, and what you should never give. Some of the best available options are mustard greens or mustasa, moringa leaves or malunggay, and all kinds of squash or kalabasa. These are by far the best because they are so easy to find locally. If you want to switch it up because you have a hard time finding these or for whatever other reason, you can also feed them collard greens, kale, sweet potato tops, or talbos ng kamote, or even saluyot, or also known as jute mallows. Wow, nagjujutes ka pala? Wag tularan. Apart from the staples, you can also feed them things like kangkong, pechay, or bok choy. Pero, dapat paminsan minsan lang to, dahil mataas sila sa phosphorus at magkakaroon ng calcium deficiency kung pinakayan mo ito. Araw -araw. Some of the things that you should never feed your bearded dragons are iceberg lettuce as they actually have zero nutritional value and avocados because they are toxic for your beardies. I'll leave a link in the description below of a complete guide for your reference. And lastly, we have supplementation. Kung napansin nyo, paulit-ulit kong binanggit ng calcium at phosphorus sa diet nila because they have a very interesting relationship. I won't get too deep into the details here, but essentially, my inverse relationship ang calcium at phosphorus dahil sa binding effect. Kung mataas ang phosphorus sa katawan nila, bumababa ang calcium. The thing is, calcium plays a vital role in a bearded dragon's metabolic system as it helps them utilize UV rays, 
develop their bones, and regulate their metabolic system. This is why it's absolutely essential to supplement your bearded dragon's diet with calcium powder with vitamin D3 to keep a healthy bearded dragon. The best option in the market by far is this ZooMed's Repti Calcium with D3, which you can find in pretty much any exotic pet store. In terms of diet and supplementation, this is honestly just the tip of the iceberg. Kaya comment down kayo kung gusto niyo ng mas in-depth video sa isang topic. And that wraps up our essential list for Beer the Dragon Care in the Philippines. If you made it to this part of the video, you might notice that Beer the Dragons are not exactly cheap or easy to care for. Imagine, ang daming kailangan bilhin at alamin para maalagaan ang beardy. And this doesn't even cover the cost of the actual dragon. But at the same time, you also don't want to buy a bearded dragon only to have it die after a couple of months within buying it. So kudos to you on watching this video and educating yourself on it. Bearded dragons are some of the most beautiful, charismatic, and loving reptiles that you could possibly own. And if you give them a good life, they can be your best pet ever. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to comment down below what other topics about bearded dragons you'd like me to cover and subscribe while you're at it. I'm Rocka the Vet Student, this is Hobie the Bearded Dragon, and we'll see y'all in the next one. Deuces!